Good morning students. I am Prerna Jain. I shall teach you geography. Today I shall revise the first chapter of the book Fundamentals of Human Geography, Unit 1. The name of the chapter is Human Geography, Nature and Scope. I have sent you a pres- PowerPoint presentation previously. You must have heard it. and done the question and answers i also gave you the gist of the chapter today i shall discuss the chapter in detail now human geography as we all know it studies the interrelationship between the physical environment and socio cultural environment by human beings through natural interaction with each other Let me give you an overview of geography as a discipline. Geography is divided in two branches as you can see in the chart physical geography and human geography. Physical geography focuses on geography as an earth science. It aims to understand the physical issues like climatic changes, air pollution, water pollution, energy depletion, and land degradation whereas human geography it includes the patterns and processes that shape the human society it discusses human political social and economic aspects our earth it consists of five elements hydrosphere the water on the earth's surface lithosphere the outer part of the earth's crust atmosphere the envelope of gases which is the outermost layer of the earth pedosphere which is composed of soil where all four meet and flora and fauna that is the biosphere similarly physical geography it further includes hydrology biogeography climatology meteorology coastal geography environmental management geomorphology oceanography pedology etc whereas human geography includes cultural geography social geography development geography economic geography political geography transportation and communication geopolitics geography and urban geography so physical geography it studies the physical environment and human geography it studies the relationship between the physical natural and human world the spatial distribution of human phenomena etc now with the passage of time geography got subject to dualism dualism means division into two contrasted aspects there are two views of geography first view is it gives importance to the environmental side and the second is it gives importance to the social factor side that is why it got divided into physical and human geography now what do you mean by dualism in geography the teaching and learning of geography became a matter of debate among geographers what was the matter of debate geographers were confused how we should accept geography whether geographical phenomena should be theoretically interpreted or it should be interpreted through historical inst- institutional approach the second was whether the subject matter should be organized and approach should be regional or systematic the third confusion was whether geography as a discipline should be law making theorizing that is nomothetic nomothetic which means the study of general scientific laws or descriptive that is ideographic meaning study of particular scientific facts and process
Now children, let me explain you all these terms separately. The first one was whether geographical phenomena should be theoretically interpreted or through historic institutions. So, our environment is divided into physical environment and cultural environment. The physical environment includes all those elements which nature has made available as free gifts of human development. For example, landforms, soil, climate, water, natural flora and fauna. The cultural environment includes all those physical and cultural elements which have been developed by men through his gained knowledge and technology. For example, houses, villages, towns, networks of roads and railways, modes of transportation, industrial units, fields, hospitals, sports complex, means of entertainment, markets, ports and goods of daily use. Now what is regional geography and systematic geography? Regional geography under this all the geographical elements of a region are studied as one unit and one region is considered a different unit from another region. Only on the basis of these geographical differences we need to understand this regional difference in geographical context. Now systematic geography under this special geographical elements of a regional unit are studied and which are generally based on political units. Therefore it is the individual study of a special geographical feature of a region. Now you must be thinking what is nomothetic and ideographic. Under this, the under nomothetic, the subject matter of geography is studied as per fixed principles. Before study, aims and object, objectives are determined and then its laws are fixed. Attaining goals on the basis of these laws is the objective of a geographer. Now what is ideographic? Under this the description of physical sorry under this the description of geographical elements is prepared and under this a geographer tries to understand, understand which of the natural and geographical factors have affected interaction of human activities and to what extent. So I think the meaning of all these terms must be clear to you now. Thus we see that dichotomy, I am using a new word, dichotomy which means division between two things that are opposed or that are entirely different. So we see that dichotomy between human and nature is not valid at all because they are inseparable elements and should be seen holistically. They should not be seen separately. We often talk of face of the earth, eye of the storm, neck of the isthmus and profile of the soil. Regions, villages and towns has been described as organisms, state, country as living organism, network of roads, railways and waterways as arteries of circulation. Thus we see the study and the relationship between man and nature is the main theme of the study of geography. This is This is just the introduction. Now we come to the next part of this chapter. Some important definitions of human geography. Now according to Frederick Ratzel, he was from 1844 to 1904. He is a well-known uh, geographer 
for his outstanding work called Anthropogeography. He completed between 1872 and 1899. It is considered as a landmark in history for giving human-centric orientation to geography. The main focus of his work is on the effects of physical features and locations on the life of the people. He is known as the father of modern geography. So, how did he define human geography? He defined it as the systematic study of the relationship between human societies and earth surface. Synthesis has been emphasized in the above definition. What is synthesis? Combination of human societies and earth surface. Now Miss Ellen, Ellen Sample, she was here from the year 1863 to 1932. She is from America and she was a disciple of Redzel. She was a staunch supporter of the deterministic thought in geography. According to her, human geography is a study of changing relationship between unresting man and unstable earth. She has tried to elaborate the changing relationship between the unresting man on one hand and unstable earth on the other. Vidal de la Blache of France, 1848-1819 to He defined geography in his own way. In his classic world work entitled Principles de Geography Humaine, he emphasized that human geography provides a new understanding of the interrelationship between earth and men. According to Blaché, human geography offers a new conception of the interrelationships between earth and man. A more synthetic knowledge of, his phys of physical laws governing our earth and of the relations between the living things which inhibit it. So, we see various geographers have tried to define human geography in their own way. Nature of Human Geography It studies the interrelationship between the physical environment and socio-cultural environment created by human beings through their mutual interaction. So, we see that human geography is the study of physical environment as well as human beings. Now we come to the next topic, naturalization of humans and humanization of nature. Ever since man took birth, he has been constantly interacting with his physical environment. Human beings interact with their physical environment with the help of technology. It is not important what they produce, but it is extremely important with the help of what tools and technology do they produce and create. So, technology is the indication of the level of cultural development of human society. For example, we see that the concept of friction and heat help in discovering fire. Second, a proper understanding of the secrets of DNA and genetics enabled us to conquer many diseases. Third, understanding of the laws of aerodynamics helped in developing faster planes. So, gradually three theories developed. They were these terms were coined by different geographers. The first theory was environmental determinism. We can also say naturalization of humans. This theory 
As you can see in the chart, it was coined by Ellsworth Huntington. And this theory was highly discredited. Discredited. Though it was very popular, but soon it did not get any recognition. Because in this theory, physical environment plays an important role. In the early stages of human civilization, technological development was at a very low level and human societies were greatly influenced by the natural environment. Human activities were dictated totally by the forces of nature. This type of situation in which natural forces are more powerful than human endeavor it is termed as environmental determinism. At that stage of low level of technological development, men listened to the dictates of nature. He was afraid of its fury and worshipped it. The physical environment for, for such societies becomes mother nature. The situation of environmental determinism can be seen in several tribal areas in India such as Central India, Orissa and Northeastern states of India. Now the second theory is environmental possibilism. We can also call it humanization of nature. With the passage of time, humans started understanding their environment and the natural forces which affected their activities, they started modifying it. With social and cultural development, humans developed more and more efficient technology. They moved from a state of necessity to a state of freedom. They created possibilities with the resources obtained from the environment. Human activities created cultural landscape. The imprints of human activities were created everywhere. Fields, orchards, health resorts on highlands, huge urban sprawls, ports on coast, oceanic routes and satellites in the space. This type of situation in which there are possibilities by human development has been termed as possibilism. Nature provides opportunities and human beings make use of these opportunities and slowly nature gets humanized and start bearing the imprints of human endeavor. This situation is known as humanization of nature. This theory was coined by Wydell de la Blush. It was widely accepted and social conditions played an important role in this theory. Possibilism in cultural geography is the theory that environment sets certain limitations. But culture is determined by social conditions. Strabo in 64 BC opposed the theory of determinism. He observed that humans were the active elements in a human environmental partnership. We have two wonderful examples for this, both these theories, the deterministic view and the possibilistic view in our book on page number three in two boxes. You can go to, through those um, examples from the book that is on page number three as i told you now the third theory is neo-determinism or stop and go determinism this theory was introduced by griffith taylor it is the latest concept and he called it the stop and go determinism between the extremes of determinism and possibilism a new concept was developed which was known as neo-determinism this is also known as the present day determinism. So, in 1920s, Griffith Taylor explained the effect of rainfall 
as the determining fact to decide the limits of agricultural settlements in Australia. A midway theory was devised by him, who described his point of view as stop and go determinism. He admitted the impact of nature on man, but he also recognized that human skill, mental ability, scientific development, and technical know how through which men can use nature to a certain extent according to his needs. This he defines as man is able to accelerate, slow, or stop the progress of a country's development. But he should not, if he is wise, depart from its directions as indicated by the natural environment. He is like a traffic controller in a large city who alters the rate but not the direction of progress and perhaps the phrase stop and go determinism expresses secondly the writer's geographical philosophy. So, I think you must have understood this. What do we mean by stop and go theory? That man can control nature but only in limits. He cannot alter it completely. The traffic in cities is controlled by red, amber and green lights. We see on crossroads these three lights. The red light it is for stop, the amber is to get set and the green is to go. The concept shows that neither there is a situation of absolute necessity that is environmental determinism nor is there a condition of absolute freedom that is possibilism. It means that human beings can conquer nature only by obeying it. Possibility can be created within the limits which do not damage the environment. They have to respond to the red signals and proceed in their pursuits only when nature permits. The greenhouse effect, the ozone layer depletion, global warming, receding glaciers and degrading lands are all results of over-exploitation of nature. The neo-determinism theory attempts to bring a balance, nullifying the either or dichotomy. Contrast between these two theories, it nullifies the effect. It means that human beings can conquer nature by obeying it. Possibilities can be created only within limits which do not damage the environment.